Hello and welcome to Video Revealed. I'm Colin Smith and this is your place to go for professional video production techniques. The subject of this reveal is selective blurring. Now sometimes for whatever reason you need to blur something out, whether it's a logo on a shirt or on a hat or someone's face, or sometimes you want to create a fake kind of depth of field kind of effect. Well, Premiere Pro and uh, After Effects both have this capability and they have a built-in mask tracker. Uh, Premiere Pro is wicked fast. It's, it's actually the same tracker from, from After Effects, uh, but what you can do is, is you can actually take the stuff from Premiere Pro and then jump into After Effects if the mask isn't doing anything you want. But you know what? In the examples I'm going to show you, it works perfect. All right, let's have a look. So in this example, I wanted to show you that I've already applied um, the effect here. And when I hit play, you can see that I've blur blurred this person's face out completely and it follows them the whole way along. So how do we do that? Well, I'm gonna go and get rid of my fast blur first. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure that I'm at the beginning of my clip. I wanna start tracking at the beginning and I'm gonna use fast blur. I'm gonna double click with that selected. It adds fast blur and you'll notice that we get some mask controls inside here, either an ellipse, a multi-sided polygon, and it says four points, but you can add as many as you want and you can draw a free Bezier path on here. Now, the one thing that I will mention is that Trying to, to draw in that area is a little bit difficult when you're this zoomed out. So I'm going to zoom in to 150%. And uh, actually, let's make this 200%. And then I'll use my scroll bars here to scroll. I can't, I, there's no uh, hand control to come inside here and do that. So I'll click, and as soon as I click on one of these, you'll notice mask uh, one comes up inside here. I've now created a mask. Before I click, I don't have one. And what you want to do is I'm clicking, holding down the mouse and dragging around and creating a shape around her face. Make sure that when I go to the first one, you notice that little zero comes up or that little O for closed, click and drag. And then now I have that in there. There's a mask expansion and all of that stuff. Um, in there and we can we'll change that in a second. You don't want to make this too large You don't want to make this go around her head or you're actually going to get the stairs and anything behind There are controls here to step forwards and backwards and we're also going to track the position scale and rotation and I will click this button here to go forward and I can stop this at any time if it's not as accurate as I want and you can see it's making all the keyframes right there for me. I'll have my finger poised over the stop and I will come in here and drag this larger. And the cool thing about this is, actually let me do this back here a little bit just to make a point. In this tracker, I don't have to worry about the track keys that are already done. If I do this and then track forward, it's going to rewrite all of those keyframes. You'll notice we're getting to the end of our clip here. And when we're done, we'll zoom out and then we'll turn up blurriness. Although her face looks blurry, it's only because she's that far away. I applied the fast blur, so the controls for fast blur are down here. And if I click in here and drag this up, you can see that I'm blurring out her face. I can also, let me just go back in and zoom in and show you that I can use this to feather the mask and this control here I can drag out to extend it. That's why you don't have to worry about going too far around here because you can extend that mask out. So when I deselect everything and play that back, there it goes. And the cool thing about this is if I wanted to now add a mask over here, then I'll just click here and you can see mask two and I could drag around his face and I could track his face also. So we could use that for a license plate. Now I wanna show you one thing about this license plate that uh, 
is a little gotcha. Let's say you're zoomed in here at 150%. You've applied fast blur, and now you're going to look at your tools and you look at an ellipse, a rectangle, and hey, look, why don't I just click on this rectangle because it's rectangle shaped. And when you click on it, it makes a mask, but you have no idea where it is. That's because you're so zoomed in, you can't see it over there. So I personally, and if you want to get rid of that, you can just select it and delete it. I personally would just grab the pen tool because I don't have to worry about making a mask off of screen and then I would track it from this point forward. If you find that you lose your mask, let's say that this happens and you're wondering where did my mask go, make sure you go back to the effects controls for the clip and then click on that mask and then you'll have it. All right. One last example here. In this one, I want to create more of a dreamy quality. I want to fade the background off as if it was a depth of field. And to do that, I'm going to zoom all the way out here and I'll select the clip, add my fast blur, grab my pen tool, and I'm going to click and drag like this. So I zoomed all the way out so I could draw outside. Oops. I could draw all outside. Now when I go back in and fit that, if I start to blur this, it's going to blur the inside, but there's a little inverted button. So I click that, invert it, and of course I want to change the mask feathering on here. I don't care to expand it, I just want to feather that, and obviously I've got way too much blur. But if I just give that a little nudge like this, now I've got this dreamy quality off in the distance and I would take care to do this on the correct plane because what I'm trying to do is create a depth of field effect and that it's not in this shot because of well the lens that I was using and the aperture and all of that stuff. But if I carefully drew around a few things and, and what you want to do is you want to look at your scene and think about it, turn it sideways and think about where something would be within that plane. So you pick something like that, the brick building in the distance, draw around that, draw around something in the beginning, fade, and now that's where your depth of field is going in. So. Hopefully you found this informative. If you have, then please click on the subscribe link to Video Revealed. If you're not already an Adobe Creative Cloud user, then get on over to adobe.com and download your free 30-day trial. Till next time, I'm Colin Smith, and it's my job to get you looking your best.